He says here, um, I want, yeah, I want to give you a couple more things. Where it says, and they overcame him, okay? Because there's some key things here. Overcame. We could say overcame is the past tense of overcome. The word overcome is a Greek word, nikao. It's number 3528, strong concordance. And it means, and I get this word. If you've been around much, you're gonna, this, this is going to cue some things in you that you've heard me talk about before. But the word nikao literally means to subdue. Now, where, where, where do you hear that word? Genesis chapter 1, right? When he said, let them have dominion, and then he said, subdue the earth. So even back then, he intended for Adam to be victorious because the word nikau also means victory. It means to overcome, okay? So literally, it means to subdue, to conquer, and we are what? More than conquerors. Why? Because we are conquerors more so because Jesus conquered and we get in on his victory. So we are more than, see, we don't even have to fight that battle. He's already fought, won, handed it to us. Now we're more than conquerors. Now all we have to do is rely on the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. He put you into a place of victory. Listen, you're not trying to fight to get to the top of the hill of victory. Whenever you accepted Jesus, Jesus came in, and now get this, he transferred you out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. So in military terms, he came in, picked you up in a helicopter, took you to the top of Mount Victory, and placed you there. You didn't have to fight your way there. He placed you there. Now all you have to do is maintain, or in King James, occupy till he comes. Amen? Do you get that? That's all you got to do. And how do you occupy? By the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. How do you stay on top of the mountain of victory? Now listen, just because you're on the top of the mountain doesn't mean you don't see the valley. You can sometimes still see the valley and sometimes the valley looks pretty close. Right? Sometimes you feel like you're walking through it. But you have to realize, and as a matter of fact, let's just, you know, we can even give it the biblical aspect that when uh, David in the Psalms, and he says that he, he causes me to lie down. Isn't that right? He says all these good things, and he says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Isn't that right? Yeah. Now, now, get that. But he, and then after that, he says he makes a table for me in the midst of my enemies. Now, there's a whole lot to that. There's some cool stuff about that. Yeah. Number one, Sometimes you got to walk through the valley of the shadow of death to get to the table that's been spread out for you, right, in the middle of all your enemies. Now, get this. See, God knew what he was doing whenever he spoke this through David because what does that mean? That means David said, listen, I'm going to sit down at the table that has all this good stuff, and I'm going to eat. Now, here's the thing. He said, and my enemies are going to surround me, and I'm still going to be able to eat. When your enemies are surrounding you, Okay, it is a physiological fact. When your enemy surrounds you, you lose your appetite. Yes, sir. You can't eat. Why? Because you're focused on the problem. And because of that, now the enemy surrounds you and you lose your appetite. Why? Because your body is gearing up, fight or flight. And when your body gears up, people say, oh, I've got butterflies, i got this. And they say, uh, I must be afraid. No, 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 that's not. <laughs> Listen, it's what I have, used to have to tell my students when I was teaching martial arts because we would spar and spar pretty heavily at times and many times they would say well but you know when i've gotten in fights before i, I you know i feel that the butterflies and, the, and and i'm just scared and i said stop that is not fear i said that is a physiological response of your body gearing up for the fight you're fixing to be in i said what that means is your body starts to cause all the blood to center in, the, in your, basically in your belly, and it'll drain out of your limbs. Why? So if you get cut, you won't bleed to death. That's why your body does that. Your body gears up, and it all goes to the center. If you go into freezing water, it will draw the blood from your limbs and put it all in, right where your primary organs are to keep those organs alive. You may lose fingers because of hypothermia, but you won't lose your life because the blood goes to the organs and keeps you alive. So what you're feeling is not fear. What you're feeling is your body is responding to the situation. So whenever you can sit in the middle of all your enemies 
and still eat. You know what that means? That means you are so not worried about it that no blood has drained out of anywhere else to go into your belly. It means why? Because you know that the one that made the table is with you at the table. Amen? And I don't care what you're going through. It does not matter because he is with you. And let me tell you, you're not going through anything that somebody else hadn't already gone through. The difference is, are you going to go through or are you going to park in the middle of it? Right? Had a preacher one time, I never forget, a sermon I've never forgotten. He said very clearly, he said, what? And he was, you know, he was one of those great running, shouting preachers, you know. You sit close enough to the front, you get holy water on you. You know what I'm talking about? And I remember, he, he, was, he was a lot like T.D. Jakes, very similar to T.D. Jakes. But it's so funny because he would walk over to that and he goes, What? In hell do you want? And we're all like, what did he just say? He said, I don't believe you heard me. I said, what in hell do you want? That you are trying so hard to get there to get it. And we're all like, oh, that's good. Yeah, okay. Make a note, you know. And then, of course, the next thing to that is when you're going through hell, don't stop. Go on through. Don't park. Amen? Listen, okay, a pity party is when you park in the middle of hell. See, you can't have a pity party while you're walking through. Amen? Does this make sense? So, all right, so I got to hurry here. I'm already 30 seconds over. Okay. Oh, no. Yeah. (laughs) But it's my building. So, anyway, okay, so...